Today, we're going to look at creating a bokeh image like this and overlaying it onto a render like this for a result that's like this. Here's another example we're going to go over how to create a bokeh image like this, overlay it onto an image like this to get kind of this result. And it's a pretty subtle thing to do, but it can be very helpful to add a little extra pizzazz and really bring a render to life. Let's jump right into it. So to start off with, we're just going to select the default cube and just start extruding it at random. It really, really doesn't matter. For this, you can, you can do anything your heart desires as long as it's fairly chaotic and somewhat random. It's, it's genuinely difficult to go too wrong at this stage. So we're just going to subdivide or add some edge loops to try and make it relatively regular. We're just aiming for little squares most everywhere, but again, it's it's pretty forgiving. Then we're going to go down to the modifier tab. We're going to add a subdivide. Then we're going to add a decimate and we'll crank that down a fair bit. Then we'll add a wireframe. There it is. And then we'll add yet another subdivide. And we just get these crazy, crazy chaotic shapes. Now let's turn that down for render, turn that down for the render. Actually, yeah, we'll turn that one up, who cares? And we're going to turn the thickness up some. Then we're going to apply scale for posterity, although in this particular instance, I don't think it makes a difference. Next, let's go ahead and drag up the bottom tab. We'll click F3 till we get to the shader editor. Then we'll go ahead and keep the principled BSDF. We'll hop over to Eevee so we can see what we're doing. Then we're going to turn the roughness down. We'll turn the metallic up and that'll be all for now. Then we're going to add a noise texture and a bump node. We're going to plug the color into the height and the normal into the normal. Then we'll click control T to add mapping coordinates and plug the object into the vector. And the goal here is just to make a fairly chaotic material that'll reflect light nicely. Then we'll turn the strength down just a little bit to make it a little less crazy, although pretty much all of this will tweak some later. Now we can shrink this down again. Let's duplicate it once. And then we'll hop over to the material tab and we'll just click the little two to so we have two separate materials. Then we'll select two complementing colors. It it does not matter what. For this, let's do like We'll do pink, and for the other, we'll do orange. And we'll change that later if it looks bad. Then we're going to go to our world tab. We're going to click the little circle next to the color. We're going to switch it to an environment texture. We'll click open. You can find these on HDR Haven. I can leave a link in the description. Or you could even copy the existing ones in Blender. I'm just going to use the basic forest one that comes with Blender which you can copy from the Blender files if you want it. I'm going to click Control and Scroll Wheel on the object, so we're going to switch to the world material. Then we're going to select our HDRI, click Control T to add mapping coordinates. We're going to duplicate our background, Let's turn it from gray to black. Then we're going to mix them together. We're going to drag out of the factor, right click, and type in is camera ray. Now we'll click Control H to collapse that down because we only need that. Now what this is doing is it's just mixing based on whether the camera can see it. So what this means in practice is, is that the background that affects our objects is this, and the one that we see through the camera is this one, if it'll load, is just black. And then, so our background is black and our objects are nice and colorful. Now we'll click Control, Alt, Numpad 0 to bring the camera to our view. and these are going to need a little more contrast. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an area light. We'll move it up. We'll scale it up. We'll hop over to the settings and we'll just crank it way up. Something like between five and 50,000. I'm going to do 50,000 and we can change it later if it's too bright. I'm actually going to scale it up a little more. Then we'll just duplicate it, drag it so it's looking at our objects and just go crazy. We want these pretty much everywhere so no matter where we go we get some really nice bright specular highlights. And this might be too much and we can always tone it down later. 
Then we'll select our camera. We'll turn the path per two all the way up so we don't see any of the background. Then we'll enable depth of field. And we'll turn the distance way down, something like pretty small. And then we'll turn the f-stop down as well. Now, if we pan around, you can see we get these crazy bokeh effects. And let's duplicate these a couple times. You can, If you want this to be faster, you can also apply these modifiers. I'm going to leave them in case I feel like changing it later. But either way works. And we're just making some, some crazy shapes. And now I don't really like this gold and the purple, so let's change our pink. We'll scroll wheel back up to other materials. We'll change it from pink to like a blue color will probably complement this well. I don't think I wanted that bright either, so let's turn down the, the brightness as well. Then we'll go back to our camera. And we can zoom around. And we're just trying to find a bokeh pattern that we like. We can click zero on the numpad and that'll pop to the camera view. Then we can click Shift F, and now we're actually looking around the camera and we can click W, A, S, and D and move the mouse as if it were like a first person type of deal. Now we're just looking for something that looks cool. Mm. Let's go with that for now. Now something to note, if we click render, this looks about like the size of the bokeh that we had in the, in the preview. But if we turn this way down so they're huge and we render again, what you'll notice is they're not really any bigger. So we can fix this by just going to render settings, finding depth of field, and we can turn this max size up to a larger number. We'll go with like 200, I think it's good. Then we can also adjust these other things because we don't really care that much about render time for these. So we'll leave the denoise up we can turn up some neighbor rejection, we can turn up sprite threshold, and we can check high quality light to focus. These will slow down the render a little bit, but it's really not that much, and since we're only rendering the one frame, it really doesn't matter for what we're doing. Now we can hop back down to camera settings and keep tweaking stuff. So this is really too crazy. We'll go with something like that. There's a couple other settings we can adjust. So if we go back to our world settings, we can drag this out and add a hue saturation node. And this gives us a lot of adjustment over the background. So if we turn the saturation way up, then we can adjust the hue and we don't really see that much difference. And that's because both of our objects are pretty saturated. If we hop back over to our material editor and just change this saturation to be zero, then we might notice a little more difference. So if we scroll back and forth, you can kind of see some of these darker areas are really subtly changing color. And part of the reason this is probably so unnoticeable is because these lights are so bright. Um, if you Alt-D, when you duplicate these lights out, you can actually change all of them at once. Let's try, though, just shift-clicking. So we select all of them, then hold Alt when you click on it. And we'll just change them to, like, 2,000. And that'll make it a little less over the top. And you'll probably, yeah, now we can notice this a little more, where you can see it's just kind of tinting it just a little bit. And this can be really good to add just a little more interest and color variation to whatever you're doing. And if you use a more colorful HDRI, it will also be more noticeable. For this, let's just make it kind of a pinkish blue color or a red, something like that. It really doesn't matter too much. Let's grab one of these objects again. Let's find our gray one, and let's give it some color. All right, now you can click F12, render that out. And you may say, this is a little too bright, or not quite bright enough, or whatever. And what we can do is go back to render settings, scroll down all the way to the bottom, and click on color management. And this gives us a couple different options to play around with. We can change the look to either high contrast, or very high contrast, and that'll adjust the image. I'm going to go with high contrast. Then we can also adjust the exposure to either make it darker. I'm going to underexpose it just a little bit. You can hold shift to be more specific. There's also a gamma slider you can use to make adjustments if you would like. And say we're happy with how this is. So we're going to click F12 to render it. And now you've got a cool bokeh, but how do you actually use this image? Well, the first thing I would do is actually save it out. So I'm going to click image save and we'll just slap that into a folder that I'm just making 
with a bunch of these because they're handy to have around. So this one I'm just going to call, we'll say orange and pink. There's also a couple other settings I forgot to mention. What we can do is once again select our camera, go down to camera settings, and then in the depth of field settings, we can play around with the blade settings. So if we take the blades and turn it up to like six, you'll see that this controls the shape of the bokeh. You can also in the ratio, turn it up to like 1.5 or two. And what this will do is stretch it vertically. I'm gonna leave mine at one for now though. The next thing we can do if we want to actually use this on an image is the easiest way if you have a specific image in mind is go up to output settings and match it to whatever image resolution you want to use. So one way you can do this is pull up the image you want. We'll right click on it. We'll click properties, go to details, and you can see the resolution right here. So all you have to do is just type this number into these settings here. So this is 1920 by 2500. So we'll just type in 2500 in this one. And now we've got a different shape. Then we're just going to once again adjust it a little bit so we like the patterns again. You can also double tap R to just rotate right around the camera base. I'll go for something like that for now. We can always come back and change this more later. Now we'll hop over to compositing. Actually, let's first click F12 and render this out. Now let's hop over to compositing, click use nodes and you can see we've got our nice overlay. Now we can click Shift A, S, type in image, and get ourselves an image node. Now we can click the open. Let's navigate to whatever image you want to use. So you pull out your sick render. I'm going to go with this one for now. And now you can see it. We'll click V to zoom it out a whole bunch. And now we want to overlay this on top of this. So what we'll do is grab a mix node. We'll drag our overlay into the bottom slot and the image into the top slot. Now we can preview that. And you can see it's just switching between the two images. Then we'll want to change the mode. We can change it to add or overlay or color dodge, really just go through the list. You can click control and just scroll wheel through all of them and find one that you'll like the look of. I'm going to probably use add for this. Then we'll scroll the factor way down to make it pretty subtle. And if you don't like how it lines up, we can change that. So if we type in search and type in scale, we can scale this image. If we type in translate, we can translate this image. And if we type in rotate, you can rotate the image. For this, I'm just going to use scale and maybe translate, but probably just scale. Let's collapse that so we can zoom in a little more. So what we can do is if we type in negative one in one of the scale, we can invert it and get the colors to somewhere we like more. So I'm actually going to invert both ways. No, nope, I'm just going to invert on the X. That way the orange kind of ends up here and the pink is more here. And now I think this base image is maybe a little too saturated. So we'll type in saturation, which will give us a hue saturation value node. And we can just pull this down just a tiny bit. This node is very sensitive. You have to change it like in extremely small increments. And let's also get an exposure node and just tweak the exposure down a tiny bit as well. And that's, that's pretty subtle. You can go a little crazier on some images, but generally I would actually recommend keeping the effect pretty subtle. For this, since it's an example, I'm gonna go a little bit, maybe overboard. And let's say it's lightening up our base image too much. We don't want it to lighten everything up, we just want it to add sort of these circles. So what we can do is actually edit the image we've rendered out. We'll type in contrast, get a bright contrast. We can turn the contrast up a tiny bit, maybe turn the brightness down a little bit. Turn the contrast up more. We can even look at just what this is. So the black areas when you're adding it will make no difference because you're adding essentially zero to whatever your thing is so it doesn't change it. Whereas adding brighter values will change it more. So if we don't want an area to change, what we want to do is actually remove 
the color. So we want it to be black. So let's hop back over here. You can probably even turn the factor up now a little bit more. Turn the brightness down. We'll decrease the overall effect and turn the contrast up. We'll make it more contrasty. And we can also add an exposure node to this one, which will reduce the overall brightness, but it'll reduce it more in the dark areas. And that's getting some pretty, some pretty interesting looks. So now we can look at a before image and an after. We can even look at it after our edits. And if we really want to, we can even edit it more after that. So let's we do this. That's getting a little too dark. Let's actually get a bright contrast instead. Let's just zero these out again. We'll actually turn the contrast up a touch. No, we'll turn we'll take the contrast down a little bit. And we'll take the exposure up a tiny bit. Which will kind of flatten it out some. There's that. Nah, that's probably not necessary. You can tweak it to your heart's content, but that's the gist of it. Really, and you can do this with any image. And say you had a different color image, let's actually just find a different one now. Um, let's switch to this one. And this is totally different, and the base colors are different, so let's go ahead and change the base colors of our base image. So we can just hop back into here. We'll change the orange to, let's say, a very light blue. And instead of pink, let's do a slight slight greenish color. Maybe we'll lighten it up some. So it'll be pretty, it'll be pretty bright. And let's click F12 on that. We can also, for consistency's sake, go ahead and look at the resolution of that image as well. So we'll just grab it, we'll click properties, details. This is 3840 by 2160, which is 4K, so 3840 by 2160. Now we'll click F12. Now we can hop back to compositing and we can see it's already pretty much set up. So we can just turn the factor way down and we're probably going to want to delete our edit nodes because they're probably not right now. We'll leave those two, but I'm going to zero this one out. And maybe that one too. Actually, I'm going to leave that one down. And then let's turn the contrast of the base image up a little bit. And you can see that that very quickly can add a lot of interest to an image. So it's before and then after. And again, I would recommend keeping it very, very subtle because you can very easily go overboard and have it look very odd. Um, for this, let's actually invert it because I don't like this blue up here. I kind of want that down lower. So we just go over to the scale node, which I deleted apparently. Nope, oh, it's right here. And we'll click negative one. There we go. So anyway, that's about all that I had for you. I hope you learned something or found a technique that was useful or helpful. And I will see all of you guys next time. Bye-bye.